Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Today I'm going to deal with a topic called King Solomon, the wisest king ever. Solomon, the wisest king ever. Now I've always wanted to do a Bible share on King Solomon because I find his him quite a fascinating character in the Bible and I find his wisdom quite inspirational and it pretty much takes up a good chunk of the 80 books and anytime you need an answer on a question it is wonderful to know that you can just go into Solomon you know i.e. Ecclesiastes you can go into Proverbs you can go into the wisdom of Solomon you can go into the wisdom of Song, I think it's Solomon of Solomon of Song. I think it's called Song of Solomon. You could go into the Song of Solomon, and you could get the wisdom that you need. You can get the answer to your question, right? So that's quite fascinating. So I think it would be quite interesting to kind of to do a Bible share, Bible study on this topic, right? So let's first now go to let's let's start this by first going to Wisdom of Solomon. So that's in the Apographa, and we are going to read from 7. We're going to read chapter 7, and we're going to read from 1 to 7, right? So here we go. I myself also am a mortal man, like to all an offspring of him that was first made of the earth, and in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months, being compacted in blood of the seed of man and the pleasure that came with sleep. And when I was born, I drew in the common air and I fell upon the earth, which is of like nature. And first voice which I uttered was crying, as all others do. I was nursed in swaddling clothes and that with cares. For there is no king that had any other beginning of birth, for all men have one entrance into life and the light going out. Wherefore I prayed and understanding was given me and I called upon God and the spirit of wisdom came to me. Okay, so King Solomon came into the earth as any other baby came into the earth, right? He came into his, his mother bore him for nine months. I think his mother was Bathsheba. So she bore him for nine months as any other mother. And he, she gave birth to him and he came into the world. And just like every other child, right? And But the interesting thing, uh, the other interesting thing is in 5 where it says, But there is no king that had any other beginning of life. So no other king had any other beginning of life, right? 6. For all men have one entrance into life and the like going out, right? So everybody is born into this world via a mother, okay? So let's carry on. Wherefore I prayed and understanding was given me, I called upon God and the spirit of wisdom came to me. Okay, so the Most High blessed Solomon with wisdom, right? So he was, he was, it, it, he was given wisdom from birth, right? He called upon the Lord and the Lord gave him the wisdom that he needed, right? So that, that translates to, to all of us, really. I mean, if we need wisdom, we just cry out to the Lord. We pray to the Lord and we ask the Lord for understanding. If we're not, if we're a bit confused, if we don't know whether something is true or not, we're not able to discern it effectively, then we pray to the Most High and we ask him, is this true? <laughs> and then the Lord will surely give us the answer that we need. It may not come at that particular time, but eventually the Most High will give us an answer. So let's now, so that was how he entered the earth. So he didn't enter the earth any other way, right? So he came into the earth as any other child came into the earth. So let's now go deal now with his reign, right? So we're going to deal now with his reign. So we're going to go to first king. Two, and we're going to read from one to four. So we're going to go to First King two, and we're going to read from one to four. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, "I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man, and keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in His ways." 
to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithsoever thou turnest thyself that the Lord may continue his word which he spake concerning me saying if thy children take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul there shall not fail thee said he a man on the throne of Israel right so David was a man after the most high's own heart so the most high had a soft spot for David and therefore David is passing the ban the, the banter He's, he's passing the banter to his son Solomon and he's warning Solomon and he said that you must stay close to the Most High and you must be obedient, right? Right, so let's now go from there. We're going to read, we're going to stay in 1 Kings 2, but we're going to read from 10 to 13. So David slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. And the days that David reigned over Israel were 40 years. So he only reigned for 40 years. I mean, 40 years is a long time, really, when you think about it. Seven years reigned he in Hebron and 30 and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. So he spent most of his reign in Jerusalem. Then sat Solomon upon the throne of David, his father, and his kingdom was established greatly. And Adonijah, the son of Hegith, came to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, and she said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. Okay, all right. Okay, so we're going to leave that one there. So basically what we wanted to get from that is that he reigned, he spent most of his time in Jerusalem, which is 33 years, and in all, he spent 40 years on the throne, right? So let's now... Stay in Kings and we're going to move over to chapter 3 and we're going to read from 1 all the way down to 15, right? And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made an end of the building, his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about, right? So let's give some edification. So the, he was supposed to build um, a house for 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 the, basically the temple for the most high god right so he was he promised to build a temple and his father he, his father told him to build a temple for god right so so he so he had he was building this temple and he did get to finish the temple right so that's just a little bit of a backstory to the story right so let's continue until he had made an end of the building his own house and the house of the lord and the wall of jerusalem round about so there was two houses that he built right so there was a temple and he built a house for himself right Two, only the people sacrifice in high places because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord un until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in his statutes of David, his father, only to be sacrificed and burn incense on, incense on high places. And the king went to, to Gibron to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings at, did Solomon offer upon the altar. In Gibron, the Lord appears to Solomon in a dream by night and God said ask what I shall we shall give thee and Solomon said thou art showed unto thy servant David my father great mercy according as he walked before thee in truth in righteousness and in uprightness of heart and with thee and thou hast kept for him his great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day right and now O lord my god thou hast made thy servant king instead of david my father and i am but a little child i know not how to go out or come in and thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude so that great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude are the children of Israel, right? Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. But who is able to judge this, thou so great a people? 10. And the speech pleased the Lord, and Solomon had asked this thing. 11. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked 
for thyself long life neither hast asked riches for thyself nor has asked the life of thine enemies and hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment behold i have done according to thy words lo i have given thee a wise and understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee so so solomon asks for wisdom he didn't really ask for selfish things or self-centered things right so he asks for wisdom which is understanding of the most high and his commandments and his mindset right so let's continue behold so let's read 12 again behold i have done according to thy words lo i have given thee a wise and understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee 13 and i have also given thee that which thou hast not asked both riches and honor so that there shall not be any among the kings like the, like unto thee all thy days 14 and if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father david did walk then i would lengthen thy days so so the most high is promising solomon that he would lengthen his days if he walks in his statutes and commandments the way how david was because remember david was a man after his own heart he loved david right because david was quite obedient 15 and solomon awoke and behold it was a dream and he came to jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants now the most high always speaks to generally speaks to to people via visions and dreams right so that was basically a, a vision that the Most High gave to Solomon, but it, it was also instruction, right? It was also instructions of what to do and what to expect, right? Okay, so let's now go to First Kings 4. And we're going to read from 20 to 21. So we're kind of trying to dilute things down a bit. So that because, you know, First Kings and Second Kings is quite long, right? So I'm just getting hitting the key bits of King Solomon, of who he was, right? And just, you know, just hitting the points of who he was and what he did for the Most High, right? Okay, so we're reading 1 Kings 4 uh, and we're going to read from 20 to 21. Actually, we'll read all the way down to 25, right? So we're going to read from 20 to 25, Judah and Israel were mainly as the sand which is by the sea in the multitude, eating and drinking and making merry. And Solomon reigned over all kingdoms from the river unto the land of the Philistines and unto the border of, of Egypt. They brought presents and served Solomon all the days of his life. 25, 22. And Solomon's provision for one day was 30 measures of fine flour and three, three score measures of meal. 10 fat oxen, 20 oxen out of the pastures, and a hundred sheep beside hearts and roebucks and fellow deer and fatted fowl. 24. But he had dominion over all the region on this side of the river from Tabish, even to Isaiah over all the kings on this side and the river, and he had peace on all sides round about him. 25. And Judah and Israel dwelt safely every man under his vine and under his fig tree from Dan even to Bathsheba all the days of Solomon right so so Solomon reigned over Judah and Israel right or Judah and Ephraim right so he reigned over all the 12 tribes of Israel right so let's skip all the way down to 25 to 29 we're going to skip all the way down to 29 and god gave solomon wisdom and understanding exceedingly much so we're reading 29 to 34 and god gave solomon wisdom and understanding exceedingly much and largeness of heart even as the sand that is on the seashore so the most high didn't only give him understanding and wisdom he also gave him uh well lots of everything really right because he was very rich he was a very rich king right let's read 29 again and god gave solomon wisdom and understanding exceedingly much and largeness of heart even as the sand that is on the seashore 30 and solomon's wisdom excelled wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of egypt right so 
20, 31. But he was wiser than all men than than Ethan the Israelite and Heman and Kolkol and Dada, the sons of Mihal, and his fame was in all nations round about. 32. And he spake 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were a thousand and five. Right, so basically those were the songs of Solomon and the proverbs. So those were the, the, the words of wisdom as as recorded in the Bible, right? So he, he wrote all of those, right? And he spoke of trees from the cedar tree that is Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that spring it out of the wall. He spake also of beasts and of fowl and of creeping things and of fishes. And there came all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth, which had heard of his wisdom. So all sorts of kings and queens, because Sheba came, uh, Sheba heard of Solomon and she came to stay with him for a bit to see who is this wise king so she came to see him but all sorts of kings were coming to see him because he had so much wisdom let's read 34 again and there came all of all people to hear the wisdom of solomon from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom right so let's go back to the wisdom of Solomon's to just purchase that point of him being the wisest king so we're going to go back to songs of Solomon or wisdom of Solomon we're going to go to we are going to go to wisdom of Solomon and we're going to read seven and we are going to read from 17 to 21 but he had given me certain knowledge of the things that are namely to know how the world was made and the operation of the elements right right the elements just means uh just things like uh you know how the world spins and you know that kind of thing you know whether it has an access or not you know there's certain things like that right the elements uh, and the operation of the elements the beginning ended and mids of time so so the Most High showed Solomon the beginning and the Middle Ages and the ending, right? So he showed him the beginning of the world, right? So when all the people were created and Adam and all that stuff, he showed him all of that. And he showed him the Middle Ages when uh, Israel ruled Europe during the Middle Ages. It's called the Middle Ages, which is the mids of time, right? That's why, that's why it's called the Middle Ages, right? And he also showed him the ending. The ending is now right so what what's happening now because we're, we're now at the end right so he showed him what's happening now and obviously he showed him when christ was due to return so he showed him all these things he showed him everything right uh the beginning ending mids of times the alterations of the turning of the sun and the change of seasons so he showed him the sun and the changing of seasons and how the world changes the seasons and all the intri intricate things that we don't know he showed solomon right uh the circuits of years and the position of the stars the nature of living creatures and the furies of wild beasts, the violence of winds and the reasonings of men, the diversities of plants and the virtues of, of, of roots and all such things as are either secret or manifest, them I know. So Solomon is proclaiming he knows all of these things because the Most High showed him these things. So that's why he was the wisest king, because the Most High was speaking to him, right? the most high was speaking to him constantly okay so that's why he was the wisest king so let's now go back to uh first kings four and we are going to go to so we read from 29 to 34 so he was the wisest king so we are now going to go to and the the important thing to take from that scripture from first kings four is that he wrote it says that he wrote three thousand proverbs and a thousand and five songs so let's go there again uh, so we're going to go to where he says how many how much he wrote here we are so it's in 32 so first kings 432 and he spoke 3000 proverbs and his songs were a thousand and five so it actually says that he wrote three three 
thousand proverbs and a thousand and five songs, right? So that was his written wisdom, okay? Right, so let's now go to First Kings and we're going to read 23. So we're going to purchase the point again about his wisdom. So we're going to go to First Kings 10. So we're going to go to First Kings 10 and we will read 23. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. So, so we're to reading on from there. Let's read on a bit. And they brought every man his present vessel of silver and vessels of gold and garments and armor, spices, horses, mules, a rate year by year. So they weren't only coming to see him. They were actually bringing him stuff, too, because they wanted to hear wisdom right so they obviously a lot of the people that were seeing him were kings right so they were coming to hear his wisdom so if they had a problem they would just go to solomon and solomon would just give them the answer right and solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen and he had thousand and four hundred chariots and twelve thousand horsemen whom he bestowed in the cities of chariots and with the king of jerusalem and the king made silver to be jerusalem as stones and cedars and made he to be as the sycamore trees that are in the vale for abundance okay all right so we, we're going to skip that bit so the important thing to take from that is it says that solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom so he was the richest king that ever lived right and he was the wisest king ever lived and all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had pl had put in his heart. So God placed the wisdom in his heart. So let's now go to First Kings. We're going to read. We are actually, we're actually going to skip Kings now, and we're going to go to Chronicles, Second Chronicles one, and we'll read from seven to twelve. So, as Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom, and the Lord... So, we're reading from 1, right? So, we read 1, and then we drop down to 7, right? And Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him, and magnified him exceedingly. So, the Most High was with him throughout a lot of his reign, right? Then Solomon spoke unto all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, and to the judges, and to every governor... In all Israel, the chief of the fathers. So Solomon and all the congregation with him went to the high place that was at Gib Gibram, for there was the tabernacle of the congregation of God, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness. Okay, so let's skip down, right? So we skip all the way down to seven. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his steed. Now, O Lord, let thy promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in the multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this, thy people, that is so great? And God said to Solomon, Because this was in thine heart, and thine hast not arks riches, wealth or honour, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast arks long life, but hast arks wisdom and knowledge for thyself, and that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made the king wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee and i will give thee riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee neither shall there any after thee have the like so the most high is saying to solomon that because he didn't ask for selfish things he asked for you know wisdom and understanding you know he asks you know, the, the, the kind of things that the Lord wants us to pray for, right? Wisdom, understanding, praying for others, that kind of thing. Because we're not really supposed to be selfish, right? We're not really supposed to be selfish and our prayer shouldn't just be about, oh, bless me, bless me, bless me. You know, it should be bless this person over here, bless this person over there, bless this person over there. You know, forgive this person over there, Lord. You know, those are the type of prayers that the Lord loves, right? And if you pray to the Lord for understanding, he will give you understanding, right? He will send people to teach you 
and he will give you the understanding that you need or he will give you a precept in the bible that explains everything that was giving you a problem right so that's who God is. So wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honour, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. So Solomon was significant because no other king would be as wise or as wealthy, right? Okay, so let's now go to Second Chronicles, and we're going to read 6, 2 Chronicles 6, and we'll read from 6 to 11. But I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there and have chosen David to be over my, pe my people Israel. Right. So this is the most high speaking. Yeah. Now it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to David, my father, for in so much as it was in thine heart to build a house for my name, thou didst well in that it was in thine heart. Right. So David's was heart was to build a house, a temple for the most high. Right. Notwithstanding, thou shalt not build a house, but thy son, which shall come forth out of thy lowings, he shall build a house for my name. So the most high said, David, you don't build that temple. I will pass it to Solomon and he will build it for me. 10. And the Lord therefore had performed this word that he had spoken, for I am raised, risen up in the room of David my father, and set on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised, and have built the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel, and in it have I put the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord that he made with the children of Israel. Right, so Solomon uh, did build the temple. He did build, I think he built about two houses, one for himself and, and a temple for the Most High, right? And inside of the temple was the Ark of the Covenant, right? And obviously the tables of the law, right? So, that's Chronicles. So, we are now going to read, so we read from 6 to 11. So, we now going to now go to the Song of Solomon. So we're going to go to the Song of Solomon and then we're going to hit Proverbs, right? So we're going to go to Song of Solomon and then we will go to Proverbs. So we're reading the Song of Solomon and then we're going to go to Proverbs. So in Song of Sol Solomon, Solomon, we're going to read one and we're going to read from five to six. I am black but comely. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the cur as the curtains of Solomon, look not upon me because I am black, because the sun heart looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keep of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. Right. So, so one of the characteristics of Solomon is that he was a black man, just like every other Israelite is. They're all black, right? Christ is black. God is black. Israelites are black. Angels are black. And Solomon is black. <laughs> okay. So it says, I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kitar, as the curtains of Solomon. So Solomon is saying he is black and he's very handsome, right? Look not upon me because I am black, because the sun heart looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keep of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. So Solomon was a very black looking man or dark looking man, right? So let's now go to Proverbs 1 and we are going to read from 1 to 7. So we're going to go to Proverbs now. So Solomon was a black king, right? So if, if you in any doubt who Solomon was, he was a black king. He was a black man, right? Because he says that I am black, right? So we're reading Proverbs and we're now reading 1. And we will read from 1 to 7. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give subtility to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. 
The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So let's go over one. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Right. So these are all the wisdom of Solomon, all packaged into one book called the Proverbs. Uh, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Right. So it's also about dark sayings as well. So intricate bits of the Bible, understanding mysteries in the Bible. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and fools despise wisdom and instructions. Brothers and sisters, I hope you were edified. This is just the characteristic of Solomon. He was the wisest king that ever were, that ever was and ever will be. Okay? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I hope you're edified. Shalom.